Greetings ladies and gentle fish and welcome to this video in which I've got a couple of replays from Tanker3069. You may well have seen some of his games before. Let me just quickly put colorblind mode on and all of that jazz. So Tanker seems to like his Soviet heavy tanks um, and I've shown some games before of his IS. This is his IS again and if you actually have a look at the machine he has two marks of excellence at the time of playing this game so he seems to do pretty darn well in the IS. Um, he's also using binocular telescopes and a camouflage net so I assume at this time that he hasn't had a chance to buy any if you'll excuse the term proper equipment for this tank because this thing really does function I mean the, the view range isn't particularly good. Binoculars and camo net and not optimal equipment for it, but they're certainly what I used when playing it, just because it's a cheap way of getting equipment on the tank. Um, especially if you're just grinding through it. But if you're going to keep this machine, um, then you probably want to invest in things like a gun rammer. Um, possibly vents and, and some other bits of kit. I do actually have a full review of this tank on my YouTube channel if you are interested. Anyway, this is not about me, this is about Tanker. He's here on Sand River. And it's a tier 8 game, but it's not a very tier 8 game. I mean, it's there's two tier 8s um, on each side. There's a few tier 7s, and well, about almost half of each team is tier 6. So despite the fact that this claims to be a tier 8 game, this is actually pretty good matchmaking um, for the IS. Being a tier 7 tank, of course, the IS can get into tier 7 to 9 games. So that means that you can run into E75s and ST1s with this thing, which can be a bit of a pain. But there we go. Right, AMX AC46. Doesn't look like Tank has been spotted, otherwise I'm pretty sure he'd have been shot. No, that shot goes nowhere near, but he has been spotted now by that cheeky little ELC. And is that little ELC just gonna stay there and get absolutely wrecked? Oh well, T3485. Yeah, that's it. And that's the thing with this gun. You can aim and complain about the accuracy all you want, and trust me, I do. But when it hits, ooh, it really does hit. 390 alpha at tier 7 is very nice. Not horrendously overpowered, just very tasty indeed. So, so far, Tanker's team is one kill up. I should point out, of course, that this is an assault game, so the emphasis and, and Tanker's team are, are attacking. So the emphasis really is on them to um, get off their backsides and go over there and kick the enemy in the face. There's the AMX again. Uh, if you want to penetrate the AMX, I mean the frontal plate isn't that strong, but it can be um, strong enough to bounce some shots, especially when uh, angled back. If you aim for the top parts of the machine, the sort of viewports, if you will, bar along the top, then that's where you can, you can get some penetrations. This T-3485 appears to have given up on life. Don't ask me what he thought he was going to achieve by doing that. Um, and there's a Tiger P. Much more credible threat, but the Tiger P is just... No, he's pulled back now. He had just stopped in the perfect position, had Tanker been loaded, for Tanker to slam a shell through his tracks into the hull of his tank, doing damage at the same time and generally giving him a bad day. As it is, Tanker's able to put one into the turret. Um, I'm not exactly sure where the shell went, might have gone into the commander's hatch, might have not, but either way, the end result is that that Tiger P is down and out for the count. Tanker's winning, a team are winning, Tanker's winning, Tanker's team are winning, there we go, sorry, that's the shot into the um, kind of vision ports at the top of the AMX. Tanker's team are winning three kills to two, however, they have used three and a half minutes of their allotted ten minutes. Of course, remember this is an assault game, you get ten minutes to win this game rather than fifteen as would usually be the case. KV-85, there's that AMX again. Can Tanker pick up the kill? Oh, no. And here we go, you can see that fully aimed accuracy, or lack of, coming into play there. I think the accuracy on this gun is something like 0.46. It's terrible. Hello, Mr. IS. No. Missed by a country mile. And now you can actually see another problem. Tanker has fired quite a number of shots. His team are now losing 3-4. And actually, Tanker only has nine rounds of armor-piercing ammunition left. Tanker's loadout, that was a nice hit, um, has been five high-explosive rounds and then the rest armor-piercing. He hasn't bothered with APCR, which I certainly don't blame him for too much. Well, you know, premium ammo can be useful. The premium ammo on this tank is not particularly good. It is rather expensive. 
and I'm not sure I ever actually fired it in my IS. Ooh, AC-46 just damages tankers' tracks, which is interesting because the IS's armour is not terrible, but it's not exactly fantastic. Tanker has a blind shot there, but of course, remember, Tanker is slowly running out of ammunition here, so he does need to be a little bit careful on the shots he takes. And at a thousand credits a pop, each one of these misses is going to be expensive. That, however, was a very punishing damage roll. He takes some damage in return, but 451, holy cow. That shaved off more than half of that KV-85's health. If Tanker now gets a slightly above average damage roll, he could nail that KV-85 and two-shot the guy, which would be hilarious. Um, but he would still need another above average damage roll, but not as above average as his previous one. It's not completely impossible. It's still kind of unlikely. Um, maybe sort of assuming he hits, getting that sort of damage roll is maybe sort of a 30-40% chance. Something of that sort of order. So certainly not impossible, but not something you want to be relying on. Having said that though, that was a KV-2 and Tanker just snipes the hell out of him to pick up kill number 3. And he is racking up the damage here with these rounds. And when your shots each do 390 alpha damage, oh, KV-85 has been put on lower health. Goodbye. When you do 390 alpha damage, the... The, the, the damage that you do in a game really does rack up at a very respectable rate. So the IS appears to have come back for another helping. I'm not sure what he thinks he's going to achieve here. Ah, oh, Tanker bounces on him. Down to three rounds of armor piercing and three minutes 40 of this game left. Tanker's team are now winning 8-6 and they are moving, um, flanking around the 7-8 lines. They're in the enemy base. This looks like it should now be a win. That IS gets taken out by the AMX 5100. Six of the enemy team left now. Remember that AMX from earlier on. If a Tanker flubs this shot and wants to kill him, he could just load high explosive, and that's exactly what you can see him doing. He preloads high explosive for his next round because then he doesn't need to penetrate this guy. He just needs to land the HE shell on his face and he'll kill him. There's the chap in question. There we go. Kill number five switches back to armor piercing so that was a nice use of high explosive ammunition there um, the 122 mil gun on the IS is quite large caliber so the high explosive rounds are rather effective I mean the regular ammunition is 390 alpha and 175 penetration the HE is 61 pen and 530 alpha so very nice indeed VK 3001P tanker takes the shot but nah, there's like crud in the way there's only three of them left, but there's only two and a half minutes of this game left. I mean, this should be a fairly um, comfortable win now. That Jagdpanther is certainly having a bad day. Can Tanker pick up one more kill to secure his top gun? Oh, there goes the Jagdpanther. M6 and a VK 3001P left. Tanker has five rounds of ammunition remaining, of which three are high explosive. Oh, can he ninja a kill? Come on. The VK defends himself and takes out the friendly 3601H. He's hiding behind this building, which is kind of frustrating. Oh, he takes a hit. He's on low health. Tanker takes the round. It's not fully aimed. It misses. The guy gets taken out by the 5100, who is also racking up a very respectable number of kills, and that just leaves this M6 wherever he's gone. And Tanker loads his last round of high explosive ammunition. Sorry, last round of armor piercing ammunition. There's the M6 in question. Tanker aims. Fires a shot. Another high damage roll to take off most of the health of this guy. And this guy is having a bad, bad day. Can high explosive do the job? Oh, 167. That leaves the guy on 108 health. And the friendly VK picks up the kill. Ah. Oh. Tanker wasn't able to get his top gun, but nonetheless, he did manage to rack up a very nice amount of damage there. And you saw how hard the IS's gun hits, but also how unreliable it can be. Um, and that sometimes you do actually have to be careful of the ammo count, especially if you're taking relatively speculative shots at anything other than point blank to mid range, which Tanker was there a few times. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the post battle results and see how well he did. So as we can see, that was an ace tanker for tanker. Way too many tankers in that. Um, fighter, duelist, and fire for effect, and a high caliber medal. He got 3,000 
513 damage, 5 kills, 1313 base experience, coming at the top of his team. The friendly Cromwell also put in a fairly respectable showing. The enemy team, well, the highest damaging guy on the enemy team was the Jagdpanther with 2756 uh, damage done. But the guy with the highest base experience on the enemy team was that Type 59 who Tanker never really saw with just under 2,000 damage done. 21 shots fired, 15 hits, 12 penetrations for 3,513 damage. You won't usually have to fire that many rounds to rack up 3,500 damage in the IS, but some of those shots were at relatively long range. Tanker also blocked 1,120 damage with his armour and assisted for 644. Now, he made 43,000 credits, but remember those ammunition costs at something of the order of a thousand credits a shell, the high explosive ammo will be slightly different. Tanker spent over 20,000 credits on ammunition, meaning that he only made a 19,000 credit profit without a premium account, which is still very respectable. Um, but if some more of those shots had hit, or he hadn't had to take some of those shots at longer ranges, that probably would have, or that would have uh, improved his credit margin. With a premium account, that would have been a 40,000 credit profit. So a nice little game to kick things off with there from Tanker. We're going to have another game from him again in the IS and see how that one goes. Here we go with game number two. This time Tanker is top tier and we are on another sandy desert map. This is, of course, El Haluf. And this is an encounter game on El Haluf, so we have the single capture point that both teams are attempting to contest and take control of. Well, I say they're attempting to take control of it. Most of the time, you're attempting to kill the enemy team and just prevent them taking control of the capture circle. You know, if you just go and drive into the capture circle, in most situations, in most games, most of the time, you're probably going to get shot up, die and lose. So this is El Haluf, of course, as I mentioned. And if you're driving a heavy tank on El Haluf, usually there's kind of one spot that you sort of tend to go to, or one area up into this top left-hand corner. Now, interestingly, this game has absolutely no artillery in it. Um, I can't actually remember if there was artillery in the previous game. Possibly not. Um, but heavy tanks generally are quite happy when there's no artillery. Though the IS doesn't care as much as some machines, it's relatively mobile. Usually you find that a light tank or something like that will rush into the capture circle. This time it's the enemy Jagdpanther, which I was not expecting, but there we go. How bold is this Jagdpanther going to be? That's a terrible shot. He pokes his nose out, decides, you know what, actually, nah, I don't like them odds, and backs off, which is eminently sensible of him. There's a friendly Cromwell also in the capture circle, so that cap counter is not going to be up, going up any further while those guys are alive. Now, this is where you tend to find the heavy tanks congregate on this map, up in this corner, and they tend to have a bit of a close range. Fisticuff fight can sometimes get a little bit wrecked by artillery depending on where they are, but as I mentioned in this game, there is no artillery, so we don't have to worry about that. And as a top tier tank, tanker really can get stuck in and this gun can do an awful lot of damage. And there we go. Who needs to aim? Snapshot on the move. Wrecks the M6. KV-85 pops around the corner and just blows Tanker's tracks off. Hello, other KV-85. Or is that the same one? No, that's another one. KV-85 pops over the top. He does not have gun depression, so he had to reveal an awful lot of his tank to do that. And he engages the other IS on Tanker's team and Tanker executes him for his troubles. So what's around the corner? Well, there's an IS on the enemy team. Hurrah, we're just meeting all the Soviet tanks here today, apparently. IS takes a hit, IS also fires, so Tanker can come round, plonk a shot into him, set the guy on fire. Apparently fire extinguishers aren't in this season, all the guy's reactions are kinda naff. And Tanker manages to roast the guy for 773 in total. Ouch. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why you take a fire extinguisher on your Soviet tanks. KV-85 has fired. He's not a one-shot for Tanker, but Tanker has this friendly Tiger as well. Never mind. T-150 takes a hit from Tanker. Tiger executes him. And then the KV-85 is using the 100mm gun and just gets completely annihilated. 
Another enemy IS is over on Tanker's right. Now, they have, the enemy team this is, have dealt with the Cromwell, the friendly Cromwell who was in the capture circle. So, the um, cap counter is now going up. Tanker bounces a shot there. You do sometimes find uh, tank destroyers camping back there where that Jagdpanther is. And of course, in this situation, there are quite a lot of tank destroyers on the enemy team. So, Tanker does need to be careful. This is risky. Doesn't bother fully aiming, just takes the shot and shaves 400 health off of that Jagdpanther. Now, Tanker's moving over to this rock, meaning that he's covered from those tank destroyers. The Jagdpanther is now dead, and the IS is not looking at him and is now also dead. So actually, Tanker took minimal damage there. That sort of maneuver with this number of tank destroyers on the enemy team usually ends in an awful lot of pain. In this case, however, Tanker was able to avoid the worst of the fire. He does, however, take a round there from, I think it's one of the Hellcats who hit him. So, Jagdpanther 4, Hellcat, Hellcat. Now, the IS does not have fantastic gun depression. It's workable, but it's not great. Um, but he does manage to plonk around into that Hellcat, leaving the Hellcat on very little health. And these sort of close-range engagements where you don't have to spend too long aiming, that's really where the IS excels. Kill number 3 as one of those other Hellcats. Mr. Iggy gets taken down by a friendly M6. This Hellcat is still alive. Tanker can take this guy out even if he has to take a 90mm round to the face for his troubles, and he does so. T-34-85 is coming up behind him. There's just this guy and then the T-25-2 remaining. So, this game is looking like it should be in the bag, but let's not discount the enemies just yet. That T-25-2 is a top-tier tank destroyer, even if it's a machine a lot of people don't like. That's the second fire that Tank has had in this game, and the second fire that's led to a kill. Managing to nail that T-34-85. That just leaves this T-25-2 somewhere. We don't know where. So... Let's go and find him. Oh, wait, there he is. Dude has been found and is taking damage to the face. He manages to kill a friendly M6, though. Now, this is 5 week V1, so this is a potential Kolobanov's medal for only death itself in the T25-2. He's already racked up five kills, so let's not treat this guy as a complete imbecile, but he could have done without taking that shot to the face. This leaves him in one-shot territory for Tanker, for the KV-85, potential one-shot territory for the VK, one-shot territory for the Hellcat, and it depends what gun the KV's using. If the KV's using the Howitzer, one-shot territory for him. Tanker takes the round from the T-25 there. T-25 is not fast enough backing off, and good night, Vienna. That's kill number six. As you can see there, Tanker has obviously got a top gun, so let's actually go and look at how that game broke down. So, Tanker got, well, an Ace Tanker, Fire for Effect, Arsonist, he actually got that twice, Duelist, Hand of God, and Bruiser. High Calibre and a Top Gun. Now, he was a little bit lucky in parts, you know, I'm thinking in particular of those fires. Twice he set someone on fire, and twice they burned to death. In the case of that T-3485, um, he probably didn't have time to, uh, to turn on his fire extinguisher. In the case of that IS, well, he should have had a fire extinguisher and he should have been quicker than he was to use it but there we go nonetheless let's not take anything away from this game because it was a 1618 base experience game which is very very nice indeed 4217 damage and six kills if you look at the experience and damage dealt by the rest of tankers team i mean the the other is did 2000 the tiger and the m6 both did around 14 1500 and the contribution from everybody else was basically negligible um, on the enemy team it was really that t25 2 who was on five kills at the end who was doing the damage he did just under 2100 an m18 hellcat also did about 1400 and the rest of their team really didn't do a lot so the difference between these two teams really because if you look at the damage counts, for example, Hellcat did about the same as an M6. T25-2 did about the same as the other IS on Tanker's team. The difference really was Tanker. The enemy team did not have anybody who achieved anywhere near that level of damage output and general badassery. So that game was closer than it perhaps looked because Tanker did so much on his own. 13 shots fired, 13 hits, 12 penetrations. That's the sort of thing you can do in a close-range fight. 
With the Soviet 122mm guns, he only blocked 615 damage with his armor. The armor on the IS is not fantastic. Spotted three enemy tanks, damaged ten of them, that's two thirds of the enemy team, of which he killed six, and got 390 assistance damage, but this game was really not about the assisting. 70, well, with a standard account it would have been a 49,000 credit uh, gross income for a 28,000 credit profit. Tanker was running a premium account at the time, so that was actually basically 74,000 credits for a 53,000 credit profit. So a very profitable game on top of that. I hope you guys enjoyed that pair of replays courtesy of Tanker3069. If you did, by all means go and catch some of my other videos. I have some other replays from Tanker as well. Uh, driving such machines as, well, the IS, as you've seen here. Um, he features in one of my games, in which he's also in his IS, um, where I'm in my Super Purging. And uh, another game or two of his where he's driving his IS-3, if memory serves. So, by all means, go and check those out. Um, and I wish you very, very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.